All right. <laughs> so we are going to go over preparing specimens. I have from last night a handful of uh, specimens of Leptopelis brevirostris, a forest tree frog. So we're going to start with one of these. A few of them in here. And those will be the next ones that we prepare. So we have Leptopelis brevirostris, and so I'm going to hand it off to Lovett while he does um, swabbing. I'm going to take field notes on it. So the first thing that we do before we uh, euthanize the frog and before we do swabbing, for, so before we do um, euthanasia and tissue sampling and preserving it, we're going to do a sample of chytrid. So Lovett is going to swab the frog, chytrid. As Lovett does that, I'm going to write down field notes about it. And the field notes will record its species name, the date that it was found, and roughly the time it was found, as well as some habitat details. And this was found last night between about 7 and 8 p.m. Um, and these like to sit on leaves above the forest floor next to the trail. And once I get it back from Love It, we'll the next part. All right, great. So one is just to note um, sex, and in, in this genus of frogs we can identify the sex by little glands that are on its chest, this is a male. So the first step will be um, euthanizing the frog, and we do that with a solution of MS-222 or tricane. There's a variety of different chemicals that are used for euthanasia. We're just going to inject a very small amount for this frog, which is not a very big frog. Hold it for a moment. We'll weigh it, so we'll record it both its mass and it's uh, sex, 2.3 grams, and it's a male. And then we're going to hand it off. Uh, as I do so, I'm going to cut a tag for it. So this will be, this is a field tag that will, after it's fixed and formal in tomorrow morning, we will tie this field tag onto it. There it is. And that field tag will also be the same number that appears on the chytrid tubes and on the tissue tubes that we have here. And that field tag will be tied onto the specimen and uh, hopefully be attached to it for the next several hundred years if the specimen lasts that long. And associated with that field number is all of the, the data for that specimen in the field. So here Giro is uh, making a small incision on the left side of its body and through that incision, giving a little squeeze and a piece of its liver will come out. And what we, we tend to do for most amphibian and reptile sampling is uh, take a small piece of liver. So we actually have a couple different preservatives here. So one of them is uh, just ethanol. So we'll preserve one sample in ethanol. And then the next sample, uh, we're going to preserve an RNA later, which is just a salt buffer. So one of them is good for DNA, one of them is good for RNA and DNA. So it's just two different preservatives. And we have dedicated um, pieces of um, dissection equipment, scissors and forceps. Okay. Tricky. This might not have been the best one. <laughs> Um, dedicated pieces of dissection equipment for both the, uh, the tissue sampling and then another set that's for uh, preservation. So Giro's going to hand it off now to Walter and then it's going to go in the fixing tray. It's okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Alright, so see, see up until 19380 is all going to be uh, left to peel as proper rosters. You feel me in there? So Walter is going to um, put it in the tray. So the tray right now has paper towels and um, are soaked with a small amount of neutral buffered formalin. So this is essentially 10% formaldehyde. Formaldehyde usually comes as 37 or 40%. So we dilute it down to 10% and then we add salts to buffer it so that um, the pH is basically neutral rather than being highly acidic, which can be bad for the specimens in the long run. So we make up this neutral buffered formalin in advance and soak these paper towels. And the paper towels give it a little bit of friction so it's easier to um, you know, keep the specimen from sliding around the bottom of a plastic tray. And then what you'll see is that we fix the specimens in a very stereotyped uh, posture, looking like maybe it's about to jump. And we take a lot of care to separate out the toes and the fingers of the animal. And that's to really help us down the road um, be able to measure a lot of features. So if the animals are in very different poses and the fingers are bent and things like that, it makes it actually very difficult to take measurement data from the frogs and then it's not really comparable between specimens. So we try and get them in essentially the same pose as much as possible to ease work down the line uh, once these are in a museum collection. And what you'll see is that for those other specimens, you'll see that the tag is next to the specimen. And so what we do is we actually when you tie the specimen on, or when you tie the tag onto the specimen beforehand, it actually can sometimes make it difficult to pose the frog or the lizard. So after it's in the right position, what we'll do is associate it with the tag, and then it'll stay like that overnight, and then the morning when it's preserved, we'll actually take the fixed specimen that'll be fixed in that position and we'll tie on the tag, and then we pack them for uh, transportation later. Is that it? That's it. Excellent. Done. <laughs> well done, team. Thank you. So this is Scotobleps gabonicus, and I've tired the frog out a little bit so he's not trying to jump away from me at this point. Um, what I like to do is take pictures of frogs that look like they're in their natural habitat. So this is a species that we found on the ground um, in a dry stream bed um, in rocks and dried leaves. So I've made myself a photo, photo studio here for him, uh, her, and, uh, and again I'm just trying to recreate the exact kind of circumstances where I caught the animal because we, I just like to have pictures that um, reflect something about their, their habitat. So I'm just going to put this one here. And the goal of this kind of photography is just to get a natural photograph, or as natural as possible. We all know it's staged, but at least it is true to the habitat type. And that's what I prefer, rather than a picture of a ground frog on the back of a leaf or something. Um, a green leaf, you know, as if it was upside down, hanging under a brush. So for something like this, um, I just have a camera that is um, a through the lens metering system. And you can do a lot if you have a flash that you can take off the camera and move around on either side. Um, and a macro lens. So it's a pretty, pretty simple camera setup. I'm just going to pose this frog a little bit. Oh, it looks natural. Bye.
That's the idea. You can see that. Mm -hmm. It's really natural.